Hey everyone, it's Jeff Douglas, physical therapist, certified athletic trainer, and owner of The Defensive Doctor. And today we're gonna to go over how to set up for a kettlebell swing. All right, so priority number one for a kettlebell swing is we have to be able to hinge. And if we can't hinge, then you can't set up for a kettlebell swing. So what is a hinge? Well, for those that don't know, a hinge is when we move at our hips right here versus a squat is where I'm gonna get my knees more involved all right, so a hinge, if you had the hip joint here, and this is my femur, the long bone, we're gonna be moving at the hip, all right, versus more bending at the knees. So if you wanna get into like a strong first definition of what a hinge is, when you set up, they're gonna say that your shoulders are above your hips and your hips are above the knee, is the technical, simple way of determining if it's a hinge or not. All right, so things I wanna look at when we do a hinge, or when we do a kettlebell swing, is our stance. Usually about hip width apart. There are times we can go out there and we could get in a sumo, a sumo when we are doing maybe some doubles or if you wanna make an exercise maybe more quad dominant with it. But for the basics, the general here, is we're gonna go out hip width apart and we're gonna turn the feet out, okay? Now, the kettlebell, I'm gonna show you a side view of this one, is gonna be maybe 12 inches to you know 18 inches out in front of you okay so my i am hip width apart my feet are slightly externally rotated or turning out if you're looking at a clock at your feet i have one o'clock on my right foot and i have 11 o'clock on my left foot here so if i had an overhead view that's what it would look like and now if you had an overhead view as well it looks like a triangle so my big toes are the base and then going to the kettlebell will be the two sides to complete the triangle we're going to hinge. So an easy way is I like to put my hand in my inguinal can, uh, canal or lig on the ligament there, and you push your butt back like I'm folding my chest over. And if you do it properly, there's gonna come a time where your hamstrings are going to get tight. That's good. That means we're loading our hamstrings. We're loading the posterior chain of our leg muscles because I don't wanna see a squat because many people like to squat their swing, okay? Quad dominant can be very hard on the knees, or they're gonna round their back to get there, and then again, that's gonna make it extra stress on the low back to do that. So, big thing, butt back, feel it here. This is all I have for hamstring mobility. That's fine. How do I get down there? Now we can get a little squatty with it, but we have to load the hips first, okay? So I load the hips, sink down, and now I'm going to put my hands on the bell right here. Okay, if you look at this, this is how I'm gonna grab the bell. One hand here, and I'm gonna grab it with every single finger. Okay, think about gripping it strong with every single finger. And it may come onto the side a little bit as well, and that's to totally okay. Bigger hands, you have to find a way to do it. Okay, so I'm gonna come back down, I'm gonna park it. So, hinge. One hand, grip it every single finger. Next hand there, okay? And then you're gonna pull the bell at an angle right there. And then the big thing too is you're gonna see many of you are gonna to wanna to round forward because it's out there. We're gonna retract, we're gonna bring the shoulders back. I like to say wide chest, okay? So we're gonna go wide chest, that's gonna turn on our lats, keep them nice and tight, and that's gonna turn on an extra back brace while we're doing this by getting the lats engaged. Back down, slight lean towards you. I have my triangle going right here, okay? Packing the lats down and back, boom. Just like I'm trying to bend a bar around my body here. Bend it tight and it's sight lean and you're gonna still, you should be feeling all the tension in your hamstrings and your glutes. If you're not feeling it there, then you are not loaded properly and you should not be swinging. All right, then we have to figure out why you're doing that. Are you more coming down here and it looks like a squat now when you're doing it? Or are you rounding your back and now I'm feeling a little more tension right here? And that's, your back's gonna wear down really quick with that if we're constantly doing rep over rep over rep like that, okay? So last time, review. I got hip width, feet are turned to one and 11 o'clock. We're hinging to get down there. Shoulders above hip, hip is above knee. I can feel the tension in my hamstrings. Two hands here, gripping it with them nice and tightly. I am bending that bar around. I'm turning my lats on, slight lean. And this is the setup for a kettlebell swing here. I hope that helps. 
And next we'll get into the basics of initiating a kettlebell swing. Have a great day. Thank you for watching this video. If you found this information useful or helpful, please subscribe to this channel. Just drag that mouse right over to the red box, click it so that you're notified the next time that I post a video. Again, thank you so much.